Today, Karine Jean-Pierre struggles to come up with answers on inflation. We get an exclusive on the January 6th defendants requesting a transfer to Guantanamo Bay. And yet another all-ages drag show took place in Plano, Texas. I have a firsthand account of that. And uh, we've got all of that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. I have something in my eye and I'm going to try to not let it distract me. I am joined today by Eric Chulai, Blaze TV contributor mm -hmm. and of course a founder and owner of Ripiverse Comics, which you all need to go check out because he is participating in the parallel economy. I'm trying out here. I'm trying. There's no there's no woke comic book characters in true, Ripiverse. Very true. Okay. Very true. Uh, also joined by Yaku Buyans, also Blaze TV contributor and host of the bottom line. I appreciate you guys being here. It's been a while since we got the gang back together. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's, good. It's more my fault. I know I've been out for like what three weeks since we started the fulfillment. Then yeah, listen, you become a listen. millionaire and you I'll just stop showing up. I guess. <laughs> well, now I'm no, back. Like no, your hours are through the roof. Right? <laughs> That's what it is. When exactly what it is. People don't understand. Right, we were yeah. talking about this off air. Yeah. Like yeah. when you do your own thing. Yep. I know folks hate CEOs. They hate owners and like. Dude, I've never worked as much mm -hmm. as I do right now in mm -hmm. my life than mm -hmm. I ever have. You get paid last. You get paid last. You sign the front of the check and you clock the most hours. Yep. But hey, you're saying you're trying. You're doing better than trying. I appreciate man. it, man. You're, you're, you're knocking it. it out the park. Yeah, I feel so sorry for the busy Eric July <laughs> making all of his millions of dollars. Oh, no, poor Eric. Oh, he has to work hard. I know, right? I'm kidding. No. I'm I know, right? We got to get no love here today. No. <laughs> I don't deserve it. It's all you can't good. leave for three weeks. And I know. Come back I, I, and get I expect yeah, that. Yeah. I, I will get. I'll take it all. I, I get it. I get I, it. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's uh, let's give someone else some crap. OK, let's <laughs> let's give Corinne Jean-Pierre some crap. Yesterday, Peter Ducey asked her. This is, of course, White House press secretary, who is the greatest example of why affirmative action is a total and complete failure. Corinne Jean-Pierre, uh, she was asked why Americans haven't seen any progress on inflation since Joe Biden says he says inflation is his top domestic priority. Here's that exchange. Uh, following up on something you said earlier, if President Biden's top domestic priority is inflation, why doesn't he have more to show for it? Hmm. So, uh -huh. yes, go. The president understands, uh -huh. and what? we've talked about this many times, uh, okay. that uh, inflation uh -huh. um, is an issue, high, high cost. Cost is an issue for the American people. Yes, that's what inflation is. And so he's been very is. clear okay. about making that his number one economic priority. And mm -hmm. he's done the work. And he's done the work with Has congressional he? Democrats. When you think about the Inflation Reduction Act, Republicans did not vote for that at all. Mm -hmm. And what Republicans want to do is that they want to repeal that very historic piece of legislation uh -huh. that is also going to lower energy costs, that is also going wait, to help energy. fight uh, climate change. Wait, they we're want talking to about get inflation. rid of it. So there what? is a contrast wait. that we are going to make, which is how uh -huh. Republicans are actually going to make things worse. Oh, and Democrats no. want to do the opposite and make things a little easier. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so bad. I mean, she lost me at the president understands. Yeah. At that point, I was like, no, <laughs> everything else we you're know saying you're is lying. a complete now lie. Know, now it's we know you're lying. Because that man doesn't understand jack. Okay. I, God, this is so, and look, it's frustrating, I think, for us sitting at this table to watch because we have been talking about since they introduced the bill it's called Inflation Reduction Act. It does nothing to it, reduce inflation. And it in fact, it's a climate inflation. change. Yeah. Right. It's a it's a climate change thing. Right. It, it's mm -hmm. for all of this green energy. It's yeah. and then you have um, one of Joe Biden's advisors. I don't remember which one. One of the dummies. But that doesn't narrow it down. Who goes on uh, national television over the weekend and is asked about, well, why haven't when are Americans going to see um, a reduction in inflation? And her answer was, well, they're going to see it next year. It's not going to be this year. It's going to be next year. And it's going to be because they can, whenever they weatherize their homes, they're going to get a tax credit. Mm. <laughs> it's like, mm. you guys are living in some crazy elitist bubble where you don't understand that the average American does not have the money to invest in weatherizing their homes to get some minor tax credit at the end of the year. Like, that is not reality. And somehow they think that oh, the winning message is going to be to go on a national platform and say Republicans actually are going to make it worse. 
It's Republicans' fault, <laughs> actually. I mean, there was that point where they were denying it at one point, like the inflation being a, mm -hmm. as well as more so the recession, and it being temporary and all this, and now you can't really deny it, definitely after it's extended for this period of time. I continue to say that the inflation rate that they are telling you, it's far yep. worse than whatever mm -hmm. the, whatever number that mm -hmm. it is that they're giving you. Yeah, they say 8%. I'm like, huh, yeah. I'm feeling about 20, <laughs> yeah, 20 yeah, at yeah, the minimum. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like, so whatever it is that they're talking about, I mean, whatever. But this bill is... Not unlike the others that they pass, where they will label them as, like, in the title, something yes. that it does. And then it's this laundry list. Like, I mean, you're talking hundreds of pages worth of, but you don't need that many pages to, if it really was designed to do what they say. First of all, you had to do it in the Fed. If that was what you right, really wanted right, to do right. as far as uh, uh, addressing or reducing, certainly the inflationary uh, issue. But they're not ever going to do that. This was more so they identified an issue. Democrats do this very well. They identified issue. What are people talking about? Remember when the lynching thing was a thing mm -hmm. for, for a little bit? Yep. They passed a bill, mm -hmm. or they attempted to, mm -hmm. that was, hey, the anti-lynching bill. And then they put a bunch of other bull yeah. crap in it. It's like, well, you're not against... You know, how could you be against, against Lynch, yeah. which is already illegal, by the way, right. at the federal level? Uh, but they didn't stop them. They're doing the same exact thing now, and they position ex to just to her point that it's the Republicans' fault. You didn't vote for it, so you must be against trying to actually reduce the inflation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. These people are not only con artists, but they're specifically evil people because they expect you to forget. And to be fair, a lot of Americans do have the memory of a goldfish. Well, they will forget that yeah. they literally said all of the representatives were telling you that this wasn't even a thing for a little yeah. bit or at minimum. And then it moved to, well, it's only temporary. Now they're talking about, well, next year we'll maybe get around to it. Mm -hmm. Und they knew from the get go this bill had nothing to do with reducing inflation and everything to do with them cramming whatever nonsense that they wanted to in that bill. Yeah. Um, I want yeah. to I want to bring up something that I thought was was. Um a good observation that Stuber Gear said yesterday, which is this, how much of this do you think is the Democrats already trying to prepare for November because they know that the Republicans are going to take control of Congress and they want to go ahead and just now put out into the universe that it's the Republicans' fault because they know... Is inflation going to get better by November? Is inflation going to get better by the beginning of 2023 throughout the entirety of 2023? Mm -hmm. No, because they've already set these things in motion. So why not go ahead and prepare and blame it on the Republicans because you already know it's going to be a bloodbath in November and you want to go ahead and set that narrative now? It, yes, I agree with Stu on that 100%. And then mm -hmm. the other side of the coin also. It is blame the Republicans, pin them with a the narrative. Look, the left who is basically Hollywood, is be, they're brilliant at movie titles, taglines, and loglines. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know this. Yes. Movie titles, taglines, and loglines, and that lasts for about a 12-hour news cycle, but now in America, that's all you need. Yeah. And then it's like, well, it's the law. We said it, so it is so. Yes, it is to pin, them, to, to pin the Republicans for they're the ones to blame, but it's also, hey, guys, hang on with us. It's not far. January. Mm. <laughs> January. You're going to get relief. Just January. You're voting in November. Hey, that's just 35, 35 sleeps, Eric. <laughs> 35 <laughs> sleeps. 40 sleeps and you get relief. How do we get it? Well, you get it in a tax credit. Oh, you're going to reduce inflation by giving the taxpayer some of their own money back that they paid in tax that you're robbing them blind throughout mm -hmm. the year. No, that's not a strategy to reduce inflation. They're never going to reduce inflation. If they keep the House and the Senate, which they won't. They'll double down. Why would they not? No. This works. Are you saying that, are you actually trying to purport that spending money is not the answer to you spending more money? So spending <laughs> I, I, more I of your money I know does it's not a radical, solve spending look, more it's of your money. It's a radical notion, and is it's that, probably a tinfoil hat notion. Yeah, I, right? okay, Alex Jones. But, <laughs> but when I try to call Amex last week, and I told them, hey, I'm looking at my balance. How about increase my credit? We just spend our way out of this. Right. We're going to reduce yeah. my debt to Amex yeah. by me spending 10000 more. And they said yes. <laughs> right? No, nope, the, they oh. didn't like that. They didn't. <laughs> Shocking <laughs> it's to it's me. funny how that works. They yeah. get to do it, but it doesn't work. Man, oh, man, everybody <laughs> would be out of business if we operated like the government when they get to just every fiscal year. 
talk about how much they're going to spend, and then they say, well, we can't. We know we can't account for this. Let's attack on an extra about, you know, quarter of a trillion dollars yep. Uh, yep. on the end right. of that bad boy that we're going to spend uh, in deficit spending that we know we're not going to even get. Like, any business operates like that, they're done. They're right. done. It's a terrible business strategy, but that's what happens when you are able to have, like, this endless supply of money by way of printed out thin mm-hmm. air mm-hmm. or through the form of taxation. And they don't understand, or maybe they do, how that impacts folks. I mean, look, I've been a businessman my, for the better part of my adult life. Obviously, this with the Riververse stuff is the most successful thing that I've done, at least to certainly this degree. And even moving there and, and seeing how that impacts me that I have to account mm-hmm. for this, yeah. the yeah. money not going as long as as far as I'd like it to go, or just the fact that the government is expecting to get their dirty paws on a certain percentage when I could be reinvesting it, which means more jobs for the people. Right. Yeah. They don't even consider that right. a, a, as, as a reality for helping people get out of this situation. The, the Democrats, and I mean this, I'm speaking sincerely here, they believe that they have to be the vehicle upon getting us out of a poor situation that they often drove us into in the first place. Because to get out of the way would be the best thing ever. However, there's no heroes there. Right. Or rather, the only heroes are the American people. And they can't have that. Well, Eric, here's the deal, though. As a family, you've got a life raft, okay? And they're punching holes in the side of your life raft mm-hmm. behind the curtain telling you, well, we're fixing things here. When your life raft goes down, they just jump ship and print money and jump in another life raft. Right, yeah. right. right. That's just how they operate. They just they spend themselves because the elite, they're where they are in D.C. They're never accountable to nothing. Right. They don't stand account. And when you throw a quarter of a trillion dollars mm-hmm. of America's well, just printing money, yeah. earning that back, paying that debt back, oh, it is yeah. disastrously difficult, right? Yeah. So we are in such a deficit. That I, I don't think any of the reports of what our deficit is even remotely accurate. Well, it's not, yeah, because so, they're not going to get that. It's not no. that like they're going to, so the deficit is probably going to be worse than whatever they predicted in the fiscal year anyway. So I, I want to I throw into the equation here um, just how bad it's gotten in the Democrats. Just completely, I mean, they're just lying and thinking, expecting that you, you dumb American is what they think of you, right? Yeah. You dumb American, you're not going to understand that what they're saying is a lie. Last week, while getting takeout at a California taco shop, Joe Biden claimed that gas has always been seven dollars in california watch have you seen gas prices around here in la it's seven bucks a gallon almost well that's always been the case here no no nationwide it came down about a dollar 35 and uh we're still down over a dollar after you rose it we're going to work on housing wait what does that have to Okay, I'm not sure what housing has to do with gas, but just for the record, gas prices in California have surged, uh, oh, just 39% in the past year. Yeah, That's insane. $7, though. It's always been, I mean, come on. Don't you remember (laughs) the 1930s? Mm -hmm. It was $7. always $7 in California. Movie titles, taglines, and log lines. Because he said it, you've got those idiots out there that go, guys, it's always been like this. No. It has yeah, not. Textbook gaslighting. That's yeah, what the term actually really means. When they yeah. try to, you you hear them talk and they you know they get you to try to question yourself. Yourself. Yeah. You know Insanity. What I mean? like, yeah, yeah. Like wait Logic. a minute. I, I I I've been here. I've lived here. You're telling me something that's the complete opposite of what I've experienced. Mm-hmm. And it has you as an individual like questioning yourself. Like, am I the crazy one? Definitely when you're in California because you literally are surrounded <laughs> by uh, surrounded by a bunch of brainlets. So you're yeah. like, damn. Like, what, am I, am I, no, 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 you're the sane one. You're just surrounded by a bunch of crazy folk that have been convinced by quacks like him. But it's so dangerous, it's so so disastrous if you continue not only to heed to what it is that they're saying or believe what it is that they're saying, and then you act like, well, they're going to save us anyway. And if you talk to some members of the left, particularly young folk, they actually believe that much like they did with the, uh, let's say, the previous election. And that was, okay, we get past this election, we get, aka, we get Donald Trump out, this is going to resolve our problems. Yet here we are, and the problems have not been resolved. In a lot of cases, they have gotten actually worse 
Um, and then we're going to move to the next election cycle. And here we go yet again. It's like Groundhog's Day. And I, I think we're going to be doing a thing here uh, at the Blaze on Election Day. And I'm willing to bet a lot of what we talked about in the last election is going to be the Talk same damn thing that we're yeah. going to go yeah. over in this Groundhog one. Day, you're right. Um, all right. I would be remiss. we got to go to break. But I would be remiss if I did not at least play uh, yesterday. Joe Biden was trying to let the public know where they could report fraud in his student loan forgiveness program when he's... <laughs> The 722-year-old Joe Biden spelled out the dot in dot-com. Watch. If you get any questionable calls, please tell us by going to <laughs> report fraud, report fraud, D-O-T-F-T-C <laughs> dot gov. We've done the, we've done the the websites for a really long time now, Joe. I don't know if you it's it's 2022. You don't have to actually. I mean, spell he was out. old when we were using the internet, so maybe he's he never 722 got years old now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like maybe he just never got on that train, like at all. Which I mean, that that's was true because the, what did he do in the um during the campaign where he he was trying to tell people to text oh, the numbers yeah. and he yeah. screwed that completely <laughs> up. Oh, I my guess. God. It is, I, 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 it is a yeah. train wreck. We were just yeah. watching. Train wreck. That's the word. Oh, train man. Uh, all right. We've got we've got more to come. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Tommy John. So uh, the weather is changing. Everything is feeling cozy. I'm in my long sleeves now, which is great because the studio is always 10 million degrees below zero. And uh, this is why you need to get Tommy John loungewear um, in my house. It is just a known fact that I cannot enter the home and uh, talk to people uh, in my home without wearing Tommy John loungewear. It's guaranteed to fit perfectly with comfy, non-piling, uh, micro-modal fabric. There's no lint balls or fuzz. It's luxuriously soft, tri-blend fabric with a flexible four-way stretch. Everything's backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee. You got to try it. They've got things for everyone. They've got stuff for men. They've got stuff for women. They've got loungewear. That's pants. They've got shorts. They've got it all over at tommyjohn.com slash Y for 25% off lounge and sleepwear. That is 25% off lounge and sleepwear at tommyjohn.com slash Y, tommyjohn.com slash Y. See site for details. Something that I think isn't covered in the media as much as it should uh, be covered is the political persecution of the January 6th defendants. And um, I try to shed as much light on that as possible because they seem to be the forgotten people. And um, there are really serious things going on right now. It got so bad that uh, 34 of the January 6th defendants being held at Washington, D.C.'s jail have actually asked to be transferred to Guantanamo Bay if conditions don't improve at their facility. Uh, seven pages of yellow legal pad paper recently submitted in federal court. The defendants described the jail in the nation's capital as having, quote, medieval standards of living, end quote, and hellacious conditions that it insists on tormenting its traumatized guests with. They have been begging for help, for water, for medical aid in the jail. They are not allowed visitations, uh, access to religious services, or access to their attorneys. And reportedly, their laundry has been returned with brown stains pubic hair or reeking of ripe urine. I want to welcome to the program uh, attorney Joseph McBride. He is uh, the attorney at the McBride Law Firm. He represents some of these defendants and is behind the letter requesting the transfer. Uh, thanks for being on with us, Joe. Thank you for having me, Sarah. It's good to be here. I, so, so what can you tell me about um, how have you, because obviously, and, and we've been talking about this for a while, that these defendants have not been uh, given due process. They're not allowed to talk to their attorneys. Um, how have you been able to, to talk to them? How have you been able to get all of these accounts of what's actually going on? So uh, I'm down at the D.C. jail quite frequently. The guys know me down there. And I've been able to sort of work out through Ryan Nichols, who was there until recently, uh, different, different accomplishments that we could do inside. One of the things I had the guys routinely do, just as a matter of course, is to document and witness and sign affidavits when an incident happened to somebody else because the government was burying this stuff or these records were never coming out of the prison itself. And we had gotten to a point where we were like, look, you know, what can we do? I want you guys to sort of talk about this. And one of the guys was just like, look, you know, we'd rather be in Guantanamo Bay. How about a letter just sort of voicing that to the public, letting the world know that we understand and appreciate that the actual uh, terrorists in Guantanamo Bay get treated better than we do. So we'll put it together and we'll sign it. So they did that. And I actually published that 
to the court back in December of 2021, that letter is from. It's getting picked up again a second time now. People are really just seeing it for the first time wow. because we republished it in another uh, motion that we that we filed on behalf of Ryan Nichols fairly recently. And we've been documenting and pub publishing these things along the way so that if we ever have a, had an opportunity like today to talk about it, we'd be able to point back not only to what's going on now, but to, to the past almost two years of mistreatment. So have you ever seen, because I'm, I'm trying to recall a time where in, in modern history, right, in, in our generation, where there has been such a blatant political persecution uh, of an opposing party. And I just, I, this is, to me, unprecedented. Do you agree with that? I 100% agree with you that this is unprecedented. This is the first time in the history of the United States of America that the political party who's in power is hunting down and jailing members of the opposition party for political dissidents. It is profoundly un-American. It is absolutely wrong. It should not be happening, but it is happening. Yeah. Um, have you gotten any traction on, uh, on these filings on this particular request? So that's a great question. Uh, we had a habeas petition filed in two cases. What's important to understand here is that we've created so much public outcry and, and, and sort of drama for the DC jail that new guys aren't really going there. So they have a gulag system. It's, in, it's, it's primarily in DC, it's also in Virginia. One of the prisons in, in Virginia, Northern Neck Regional Jail, Christopher Quaglin's there. It's actually even worse than DC jail. Mm. They're just sort of expanding the scope of the gulag system and they're burying guys further and further sort of underground to suppress what's happening. Unfortunately, I have to be very careful about what I say because we have active litigation in front of judges, mm -hmm. but I do not feel that we're getting a fair shake in the courtroom. I do not feel that our petitions have been honored the right way. We have uh, hundreds of pages of documents, well, almost two years worth of uh, documented torture, be it medical torture, psychological torture. Christopher Quaglin, I took him in front of a judge the other day, he was down 50 pounds mm. because he's being starved. I have other guys who have been on suicide watch, you name it, it is happening. The system does not care. If you supported Donald Trump during the last election, if you had the audacity to object to the election results, and if you, God forbid, question the Biden regime's actions right now, they will jail you, they will cancel you, they will disenfranchise you from your bank account, they will put members of your family in jail as well in an effort to, to chill free speech and to chill political opposition in this country. We have to fight. We can never give in, we can never give up. Everything is at stake. And this stuff needs to be shouted to the mountaintops because these are men with no criminal records, teachers, doctors, members of their community who are upstanding members of their community and their households, never been in contact with the criminal justice system before. And they're all universally being jailed as if they are actual terrorists who blew up the Capitol. And that simply never happened. I appreciate you guys taking the time to to bring the well-needed and much-deserved attention to these issues today. Yeah, um, I um, so just to clarify, um, are these defendants that you are representing? How many of them are accused of of you know something that's some sort of violence? Or because I know a lot of it is just like parading, you know, parading in in the Capitol. How how many of these people who are suffering in all of these conditions are actually accused of? you know, violence or uh, stealing or any of the more serious crimes that we hear about? Sure, so you have somebody like Richard Barnett, who's a client of mine. I was able to get him out last year. He's the guy who had his feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk or a desk in her office mm -hmm. suite. He was not violent, I was able to get him out. The majority of the guys who are inside now are accused of violence, but it is important to recognize that violence in and of itself does not necessarily mean that it's criminal. Right. Think about Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse blew away three people in the street. That is as violent as you can get, but he was justified in his actions. So if you showed up to the Capitol on January 6th, you with your daughter or your friends, or you showed up by yourself, and you see elderly people, women, 
younger, smaller people getting their getting their snot kicked out of them by the Capitol Police or by the Metropolitan Police. If you're a good person, you're going to step up and you're going to say, hey, Officer X, don't do that. And when he does it again and again and again, you're going to do something about it because you're a good person and you're not going to stand by idly while other people get abused. In the vast majority of the cases, 95% of the cases, that is exactly the situation. Mm -hmm. Five people, five protesters died at the Capitol on January 6th. Most people do not know that. And these guys who were there were either in close proximity to those deaths or they were stopping other deaths from happening. These guys need to have their stories told in the world. They need to have their stories told in court. Unfortunately, the Department of Justice is uh, not playing fair uh, fair ball here. They're burying discovery. Discovery is still coming out to this very day. And they're threatening people with no prior history of criminal activity whatsoever with 20 or 30 years in jail. And they're doing that to disenfranchise them and to disincentivize them from going to trial because they do not want the truth to come out. Mm. If this was a fair fight, and if the facts actually came out about January 6th, the United States government would lose in a blowout. Yeah, yeah if I can quickly ask a question. Now, thank you for coming on and for your work. Um, I think to hit home for Americans is the violation of due process, mm -hmm. that there is no due process. And if, in fact, if the government will not extend due process to one citizen, they would surely be willing to not extend it to anybody watching this show right now. And it's a constitutional violation. Can you just talk to me a little quickly? What is your remedy? Because you do get some of these people in front of judges. The abandonment of due process, where do you go when the government is not upholding due process? That is a great question. And that is sort of the biggest question of the moment right now. We are struggling with what to do. It is the Supreme Court precedent is clear. The law is clear. If you are a pretrial detainee, you've been merely accused of a crime. You are therefore innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. Because of this, the government is only allowed to hold you for safekeeping so that you make your, your trial appointment. Now, what is the standard while you're in jail? No punishment of any kind of a pretrial detainee is acceptable. If you're convicted of a crime, you go before a jury of your peers and you blow a trial or you take a plea, then you're guilty. And the punishment for your crime is the deprivation of your freedom. The, the world and the court system recognizes that prison is not a pretty place. But with regard to pretrial detainees, it's no punishment of any kind. Being down 50 pounds, driven to suicide watch, beatings, macings, uh, intimidation, denial of medical care, denial of access to your attorney. Months, some of these guys have done nine, 10 months in solitary confinement before any, anybody even knew they existed in the outside world. What we're seeing right now is the deprivation of due process to these men simply because they spoke out against the election. This is the stuff under which dictatorships mm. are born. And I can't stress it enough, if we don't stand up and speak out now, in five years from now, we will not have the country as we know it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I could not agree more. Um, Joseph McBride, attorney at McBride Law Firm, will you keep us abreast, keep us posted of what is uh, going on and, and how you are, are helping these people and all of the developments of the case? Because we really do. It's, it's hard to find the information and we really would appreciate it. You got it. Uh, I'll keep you guys in the loop. And uh, please pray for me and play, pray for my clients um, as we will keep you in our prayers as well. Very yes. Well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Joseph McBride of uh, the McBride Law Firm. Um, all right. We've got to uh, we got to take a quick break here. Um, I want to first thank our sponsor upside this is guys this is like the most no-brainer thing <laughs> that i'm going to tell you about here because upside uh inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back okay um whether it be like do you really need that gourmet ice cream at the store or how can you make more of your gas mileage because you hate filling up the gas tank because it's really hard to pay your bills we're all stretched thin upside is a great way to counter that it's an incredible app for anyone who buys gas groceries or dines out which is oh quite literally all of us, uh, and you're gonna get cash back on every purchase. We do this all the time, so it, it, it 
you can have it see your location and it shows you all of the deals in your area where you're at. So if you're like, oh, I'm low on gas, you go to your upside app, you go turn it on and it's like, hey, there's a cash back if you go to this particular gas station down the road. Or if you're going out to eat, you're like, where am I going to get cash back? Oh, I'm going to get cash back at this particular restaurant. You go there, you claim the offer for whatever you're buying on upside, you check in at the business, you pay as usual with a credit credit or debit card and you will get paid. You will get that cash back. You got to download the free upside app and use promo code news, you get $5 or more on cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code news. You are just wasting money if you're not using this. It's promo code news. Download the free Upside app. Over the weekend, uh, there was another all ages drag brunch event. Yay! Because what is more all ages and family friendly than exposing your children to, uh, you know, men dressed up as women, performing provocative, you know, sexualized dance moves to provocative, sexualized, disgusting music? What could be more family friendly than that? Uh, this is, again, Ebb and Flow Bar in Plano, Texas. I, let me just tell you, I'm gonna play a snippet for you. Obviously, viewer discretion is advised and you should not have any young children watching this with you. Um, but I would just like to also add, it gets worse than this. I have a video that I will be uh, releasing later. Um, I know I'm going to be on Tucker Carlson later this evening. Uh, I hope you'll tune in. I'm going to be on uh, Glenn Beck's radio program tomorrow morning to talk about this. And I've got a longer, for it's like two minutes and 30 seconds of just complete and total debauchery right in front of this poor young girl here at this all ages welcome drag brunch. Here's just a little snippet of that watch. <laughs> So you'll notice it's there's a lot of bleeping because the song is about well let's just say that he's dressed with cat ears okay and there's another term for cat that is also a very provocative term it's all about that and how it's good and you love to eat it and uh, then it just drops an F-bombs, uh, a bunch of F-bombs. And it's just, I mean, complete, again, complete and total debauchery. Um, this is Ebb and Flow Bar in Plano, Texas. Uh, there were, you know, half naked. Uh, I, I still am unclear if it's an actual man or a woman in a dominatrix outfit with a whip. Um, the, these parents uh, or whoever the guardians were of this young child that you saw, outstretching her arm, putting dollar bills in her arm, outstretching her arm and like shaking it to try to get the drag queen to come and take the money from the child, which the drag queen did this like six foot four gigantic dude with fake boobs with the with the the money stuffed down in between the fake boobs, gladly grabbing the money from this child. They were giving away sex toys as contest prizes at this particular event. I mean, just the most disgusting things you could ever think. And I posted this on Twitter. And the response that I've gotten from the left has been, you're lying. You're lying. It's not an all-ages drag show. No, I have it. It's right here. I have the screenshot. I took the screenshot. They've since strengthened the language, but it was right there. They said, all ages are welcome. Viewer discretion advised. And then they'll say, well, don't you believe in parental rights? Aren't you the ones who said that parental rights is a thing and you should have the freedom to choose what is right for your child? Yeah, I kind of draw the line of child abuse. You know, it's just yep. like a weird thing yep. for me. Yep. It's just a weird, I don't know. Call me crazy. Maybe it's controversial. I don't know. I just feel like child abuse is child abuse and we have laws in place for a reason and there's no reason why this should not be part of the law. Mm -hmm. This is sexual abuse of children. It's very, very clear. And I'm all for parental rights, but I'm not for uh, your right to abuse your child. For all you clowns out there that Sarah was lying, that it's not all ages. You did see the child on the screen. Right? <laughs> it's like... Right so there. So if it wasn't an all ages event, they let a child in. Right, right. The Which makes was, it an all the, ages the, event. The, the child was there, right? So point number one. Secondly, uh, you talk about handing out sex toys. Let mm -hmm. me tell you what's going on in America. Children have become sex toys. Mm -hmm. The child is in that case actually a sex toy for a sick, demented, demon-filled mother that should go to jail. Where's CPS when you really need them? Yeah. 
Uh, where's Child Protective Services when you really need them? That's a mother or some sort of a halfway guardian that took a child and coerced a child. And this is forced fraud coercion is what you need for. That's literally child abuse. So um, let it rip. Expose all these sickos in our culture. And anybody that watches this, and if you ask yourself, I don't, I'm not really so sure I have a problem with this. You're a sicko too. You're someone too that will rape and plunder and, you know, abuse children. This is child abuse at the most egregious form. Yeah, yeah. So now, now is the time to stand up. It's not, it's yeah. not, we're way past us stand, sitting on the sidelines. Yeah, no, like with this whole drag thing, I mean, drag in it of itself and how it's been historically and certainly what it is now, it's specifically a raunchy thing. Like it's, it's meant to be geared. Yes. This isn't just even some innocent dude mm. dressing up as a, yeah. not, it's not even that. It is just like legit something that is meant and geared for adults. Yes. And for children to even have something that's all ages is, is like that you're gearing towards the drag is bizarre in it of itself, but it exists you know what it is, and then nobody, be it the drag folk themselves or the folks that are in attendance, seeing that child, nobody's like, all right, bro, this is a problem, and this probably shouldn't be taking place. So that lets you know how deep this actually yes. is. Don't even just look at it at the fact, or simply just as, though that's where you start with the parent or the guardian doing what it is they're doing. All those weirdos are complicit yeah. because mm -hmm. nobody mm -hmm. is like, Wait a minute, there's a child Get here. Get the child out of here. Get the child up. Mm -hmm. That's a very simple thing yes. that they could do. Like, yes. okay, well, the show will go on, but you, you no, know, this, this, you cannot be be here. But for whatever reason, this community of, uh, be it alphabet folk or whatever, that kind of control all kind of mainstream narratives right now, you, you see how crazy things are. Well, you see something like that, like where, because we've seen this before, mm -hmm. same kind of community, where you remember the, 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 the little boy who was dancing on stage yes, and people yes. were throwing, 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 dollar, bills, throwing yeah. dollar bills at him. Like, you should be feeling like you're ready to bare knuckle box somebody right. yes. right. after seeing something like that. Now, if it was even, say, let's say a strip club where bros go, you wouldn't really want to just be seeing no child that's there. Mm -hmm. You're like, no. Nah. That and community should frown upon. Exactly. And everybody, and, and that, that is like the consensus. The general, yes. children do not belong right. anywhere yes. near yes. that. But for whatever reason, we're expected to give this community a pass because well, so many folks, they go, so how much they pimp these, like everybody else to where they know they can get away with that. Yes. They're like, they, they do it and they've done it multiple times. They're like, what exactly are y'all gonna gonna do about it? Mm -hmm. Because you become desensitized to yeah. whatever it is that we're doing. When you have someone guardian, I don't know what the yeah, what whatever. the situation is, but they are acting as if the child is in a, like tell, like trying to pull the child's hand and give like this weirdo this money. Like that whole situation does not sit well with me. It shouldn't sit well with anybody. And I don't care where you are on uh, the political spectrum. Look, the six foot whatever guy who's coming over to take money from a child is a sick, twisted human being. 100%. And I've had so much prayer about this because we fight child sexual exploitation every day. We fight human trafficking every single day. And this results, these same sickos are the ones that will actually go and exploit a child and physically rape a child. And I've come to this conclusion. The greatest way Satan can inflict pain, harm on God's heart is, in fact, to abuse children. So when you see a six-foot guy walking up to a child, not saying, excuse me, get this, stop the show, get this child what, out of here, it, right? If they, actually, they are actually in alignment with Satan right. himself. And if they had any semblance, or even if I thought they were weird as I don't know what, but if they were legitimately people that understood what was just, what is righteous, yeah. you know, what, what is yes. good and what is bad, or rather evil, that person will look at that situation and say, this is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Stop the show. Let's handle the situation. And then we can re reconvene with our degeneracy. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they are all complicit in it and acting like this is okay shows you just how deep this runs. And this is a legitimate problem. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, I've got more announcements on the way very, very soon. But I just want to make it clear we will not tolerate this in Texas and it will be stopped. Uh, we've got more to come. We'll be right back. Representative Eric Swalwell, who, man, he is just the worst. 
Actually, I'm not sure if he's the worst because they're all so bad. It's such a low bar. Maybe he's not the worst, but he is pretty insufferable. He uh, put out a new ad depicting a woman being arrested for having <gasps> an abortion. Watch. Um, nom, 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 nom. You're weird. He is weird, but cute. <laughs> Gross. Mary Anderson? Yes? I have a warrant for your arrest. Arrest for what? Penal code 243 violation. <gasps> Unlawful termination of a pregnancy. Oh no. You gotta be kidding me. That That is my personal business. That's for the courts to decide, man. Uh oh. Your medical records have been subpoenaed and Dr. Landry's already in custody. The music. No, my, my God, you, you, you can't just- You will have to submit to a physical examination. What? By who? No, no, no one's touching me. Oh, 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 oh no. Man, turn around. Oh Put well, your hands well, behind your back. Now, oh no. This definitely is going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're just enforcing the law here. Elections have consequences. Mm. Vote Democrat oh on November 8th. Okay. Stop Republicans <laughs> from criminalizing abortion everywhere. Right, right. Protect right. women's uh -huh. rights and freedom. Yeah. Okay. Please don't do this. Please. Oh, no. <laughs> the best acting they could That's come up gonna, with. That's going to be what secures Eric Swalwell's spot is that just beautifully done masterpiece there, that theatrical masterpiece that wasn't at all overblown and over-dramatized and not at all based in reality. But I think that that's where the Democrats live. So obviously the irony here is um, ooh, this like taking, raiding homes and uh, arresting people is actually what's happening to pro-life activists that's right. <laughs> in the community uh, who are praying outside abortion clinics. Uh, obviously, what is 11, 12 of them now who have been arrested by the FBI, their homes have been raided. Oftentimes, they are actually trying to cooperate with the DOJ and the FBI, and they come in and do it anyway. But sure, sure, Eric, We'll just pretend to live in a reality where that's actually what's happening because this is how desperate you are to try to maintain power because you realize the American public really actually hates you. Um, I want to, guys, I want to get your response, but I know we're short on time. So let's go ahead and, and I'm going to take a quick break and we're going to be back with uh, the guy's response. We'll see you then. Uh, so Eric Swalwell's beautiful masterpiece, theatrical masterpiece. I, uh, I felt like it was it was only worthy of just complete trolling. And so I responded to him. I heard this is also what happens when someone says the word gay in California. And he, his dumb ass retweeted me because he thought I was he thought I was I was serious. And he actually retweeted me as if that was actually true. Yeah, this is how this it, it's. <laughs> satire has come real has become reality oh, yeah the, the yeah. links they go to to just like rely yeah. so much on like propaganda and like more so just the prying on people's emotions with this nonsense no matter how nonsensical it is is quite just the who who listens to that or rather who responds to that and like oh my god i'm gonna go vote for the democrats mm -hmm. like it's coercion right and and unfortunately it works but the funny enough there's a lot of truth in that commercial you know, they do choose who gets arrested and who doesn't, and it's the conservatives that get arrested. We just had a January 6th talk here, right, unjustly with no due process. Mm -hmm. So, but also, haha, -ha, when last did you tell law enforcement to uphold the law, right? It's mm. a joke. This whole thing is a joke, but they're desperate, Sarah. You're going to see Hail Mary after Hail Mary. <laughs> that was Hail Mary. It really is, because it's like, yeah. who does this appeal to? Yeah. No. Who does this appeal to? People are like, you know what? I can't afford my groceries. I can barely make ends meet. My kids are perhaps cutting back on things because I, I can't afford the bills anymore. But man, I really believe that I'm going to get arrested for having an abortion a long time ago. And the, the cops are going to draw their weapon on my husband for trying to defend me. And it's just going to be a complete and total disaster unless I vote Democrat. I have to. If anything, that commercial is going to make girls stop sleeping around, right? So maybe, well, maybe there's a positive like, coming They from. screwed up because they had like an actual baby in the yeah. damn right. deal. Right, right. Yeah, so, so when like, did she have the abortion? Yeah, that's what I was like. I was, that's, what, that's immediately I know. where my mind went. I was like, when, so when did this take care? Because that's like a newborn. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> well, those damn Republicans are going to take your abortion from 1970 and throw you in prison unless you vote Democrat. Oh, my God. Except none of that is actually going to happen. Uh, Eric July, Yakubuyan, thank, thank you. you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow.